Hey everyone, it's Raj from 3CB. Giant star running back Saquon Barkley suffered a right knee, ACL, MCL, and meniscus injury known as a quote, unhappy triad of the knee in week two versus the Bears. The injury occurred when he planted his right foot and his right knee caved in. This is quite typical of a non-contact mechanism of injury. The team is still waiting to have surgery until his swelling goes down. So the question first becomes, what is the typical return timeline here? For NFL players, that return timeline is averaged around 10 to 11 months. That means Saquon would very, very likely be back for the start of next season. That being said, the key to understanding his post-injury performance is patience. Typically, we found that it takes about 18 to 24 months, a year and a half to two years for players to really return to their pre-injury levels of fitness and close to pre-injury levels of performance. So really, personally, I'm looking at the second season back after returning from the ACL as the season where we'll really see the same Saquon that we saw early on in his career. It takes that much time for multiple reasons. One is it takes time for the actual ACL ligament to become integrated into the system. Secondly, after an ACL injury, especially when you have meniscus and also in this case MCL, there's long standing strength and conditioning deficits, especially muscularly side to side, for example, in the quads, calves, all along the kinetic chain. There's neuromuscular deficits. Neuromuscular refers to the nerve muscle system, which is a key component of high intensity of explosive movements. And because Saquon can't do those movements for a while as he rehabs, that system further deacclimates as well. And then lastly, there's something called kinesiophobia, which is fear of re-injury or of movement, which the research shows is one of the last things to come back after an ACL injury, having confidence in that movement. Long term, there's two key things to be aware of. The first is that with an ACL injury with concomitant meniscus damage, there is increased risk for wear and tear within the knee joint that can lead to quicker pace of degenerative changes and mild arthritis. For example, Todd Gurley is a key example who tore his ACL at Georgia and in recent years he's been suffering because of those changes in his knee. That's especially true for running backs who have a high quantity of movement but also take a high quantity of hits as well. The second long-term concern here is re-injury risk. There's increased risk for rupture of not only the injured ACL, but also the non-injured ACL. And there's increased risk for re-injury along the entire lower body due to compensation from other parts of the body to make up for the injured knee. I know that sounds all like doom and gloom, but that's all quite inherent after an ACL injury and recovery and rehab has come a very long ways. Saquon has some key positives working in his favor. The first is that his extremely high level of fitness and commitment to strength and conditioning bodes very well for him and we know that often leads to better outcomes. Secondly, from everything I know about Saquon and I've heard, he has a very positive growth mindset that views these things as challenges rather than setbacks. And that's critical for a long rehab. Both of those factors remind me of Adrian Peterson who came back quite quickly and has done extremely well since his ACL rupture. 